Hey, this is John Taylor, running back for the Indianapolis Colts, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Or as Jonathan Taylor would say, welcome in. <laughs> welcome into the show Thursday, May 28th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you, Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. It's going to be a great show today. <sighs> yes, it is. For a change. <laughs> it's about time, you know? You sounded almost like, tired. Well, I am very tired, Mike. I am I am exhausted. Just as a You seem like you've been tired for days. I you are you have nailed it. You are right what? on the money. I am exhausted. Did you know there's cures for that? <laughs> there are <laughs> like one specific. Yeah. Energy drinks. I hear you <laughs> loud and clear, Michael. <laughs> Uh, you, you're doing okay. Oh yeah. I mean, look, the, the, the honest truth is we are putting in a ton of work and recording hundreds of, uh, videos. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's, it's, it's exhausting, but we're here for the people. And I guess that brings me to the first point I'll make the first reminder, since this is the last episode of the fantasy footballers podcast before the ultimate draft kit is released, we should talk about that. And today mm -hmm. on the show, we have our ultimate draft tips episode. So we're going to bring forth some insight, some guidance from the UDK, from some of the reports and some of the features inside of the draft kit that uh, are illuminating, that are mm -hmm. interesting, that will help you understand some players a little bit better and get an idea of, of just, you know, kind of crack open the lid Look, a I little know, bit. I know mm -hmm. my draft tips that I that I'm coming with today, they've They've crafted things for me, like personally have changed what how I'm looking at 2020. So this is great. One would hope. I mean, one would hope that you are pliable to your own advice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but I wasn't going to do it this way. And then I heard myself say something. I was like, <laughs> it changed everything. Dead dude, smart. <laughs> All right. So like I said, this is the last show before it comes out, which means this is the last chance for you to get the lowest possible price on the Ultimate Draft Kit. And that's ultimatedraftkit.com. We've got the draft tips on the show today. But if you go to ultimatedraftkit.com and pre-order, that's the lowest price. Uh, you can get the UDK. You can get the UDK plus the DFS. That's what I was going to bring up, is is if, if you do play DFS, the combo is so crazy discounted before... Monday. I mean, Monday. Right. The the you know everything is out. It's up. It's ready to go. And you know it's just for sale. You're gonna love it. You're gonna have it. But uh, if you get there now, the combo is such a smoking deal. Yeah, and that has all the DFS pass plus the lineup generator and things like that. A reminder: you can find us on Instagram, Instagram.com/slash Fantasy Footballers. The community of listeners, players, commissioners, mm. champions. Go oh. join the foot.com. We love you, Foot Clan. We do. And uh, let's go ahead and do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right. The Detroit Lions will finish in the top half of the league in rushing yards for the first time since 1998. That is what we are buying or selling. Do you believe the Lions will buck the trend of the last 21 years and end up in the top half in rushing yardage. Look, DeAndre Swift arrives. Right. Carry on Johnson's there. Um, is he? Maybe. Carry on He's still good. And uh, being highlighted by our famous producer, Judge Giamatti, quickly highlighted because I think the judge thought I would believe this is just a layup a softball i was kind of insinuating that obviously i was going to sell but he wants to remind us that over the past three seasons 
they have averaged uh, their average is 16th. So they've been very, very close to the top. No, half. actually, maybe I wrote that confusingly, Andy. Uh, what I meant was over the past three seasons, the team with the 16th most rushing yards had 1,800 rushing yards, right around 1,800 rushing yes, yards. Yes, and the Lions okay. have averaged oh, and they 1,600. Were, yeah, they were 21st. No, so, they're not going to do it. Oh, I love my answer. Are you ready to hear my answer? I love it because here's why. We stat, it's yours? We stat, no, we stat every single player out, every single team out for the, for those with draft kit. So I went and looked at my team rushing yardage to see where they land. And they are the 17th worst or the, the 17th, the, the 16th <laughs> oh, best, now, the 17th now worst. I'm confused. They edged out being in the top half by 12 yards, according to mine. So I'm a clear buy. They're in the top half this yeah, season. Yeah, but you you All don't right. even get to answer because carry on's on the team. So I don't trust anything that you would say about Detroit. There's no way. There's no way they do it. I don't trust the running game at all. And they haven't been able to do it in so long. And we've talked so much about Matthew Stafford and what we saw last year. If anything, we've seen Matt Patricia give up on coming in with the New England philosophy. No? Uh, no, I, I, I think he's had to. Uh, sure. Their their offensive line has, has been bad. They made some improvements this year. Andy, coming into the NFL draft, you thought DeAndre Swift was the most – Talented running back in this year's class, correct? Yeah, but he can't run the ball if you don't. If if Matthew Zafford is throwing it down the field, I, I think the combination of DeAndre Swift and Carryon Johnson are a really good one-two punch when it comes to rushing the ball. In the past, they had Theo Riddick, and he was great for you know as a receiving back. But as a as pure rushers, they just haven't had anybody for a long, long time. The only good rusher has been Carryon, who hasn't been on the field. But the one-two punch of these two guys, I think you're talking top half in rushing yards. It's just not been close. The last four years, 21st, 23rd, last, and 30th, last before that, 28th. It was Barry Sanders. That was the last time they did it, 1998, Barry Sanders' final year. It's more about the defense for me. Uh, like I believe that if you're good on the defensive side, then you have more, Opportunity more to do rushing that. yards. And I'm not exactly sure they – are better this year than they were last year, so I'm going to sell. I will say they will be in the bottom half of rushing teams yet again. I mean, they will break it eventually. They'll break that streak, I imagine. Maybe? They got to 17th in 2013. I, I will say this. The way that we have statted teams out, Bears, at least what so far myself and Andy are saying, I have them down for 1,846 rushing yards. Andy, you have them down for just under 1,500 rushing yards, not running the ball very much so you we we are true to ourselves you see them as not a top half running team i yeah i i just think they they had success throwing the football last year they were competing i mean i can think of the minnesota game you know when it was back and forth cousins and stafford and it was uh, you know you've got you got weapons on the outside i they, i definitely like deandre swift i definitely think carry on johnson in a committee um makes sense i just don't know if they get there like you said Mike, are they going to be winning games? Right. I mean, you look at look at the times last year when you have David Blau as your starting quarterback. I'm pretty sure your plan is that we're going to run the ball a lot, and then then they're against the Bears and Trubisky, and they can't <laughs> they can't run the ball because they because their defense can't stop anybody. Last year, Carry on Johnson, Bo Scarborough, Ty Johnson, J D McKissick. C.J. Anderson for a, for a minute. Like two games. Remember Trey Carson, too? Yeah. Paul Perkins made a made an appearance oh, last year. Jackson. They, I mean, they were trying everybody. That's why they took DeAndre Swift. <laughs> that makes it a little harder. All right, that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. Use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com for some sweet autographed sports memorabilia. Again, use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. You guys want to get into the tips? I think, we'll go, I think we don't have any big news to talk about. Nope. All right. Tips and tricks. All right. Some ultimate draft tips for you. I'm pulling uh, some observations out of our red zone report in the ultimate draft kit. That's where I'm going to kick it off. Uh, this report gives you the opportunity to find, you know, players that maybe had an opportunity and things didn't go their way. Uh, there are some interesting things that I found. Nick Chubb, 
I want to talk about Nick Chubb because I know I've heard Mike bring up, and we've joked about it. I mean, we've seen Nick Chubb. Yes, it it defies all logic. Last year, he tied Christian McCaffrey for the most ten zone attempts in the NFL. Those are valuable for running backs. The the difference between a, t- a twenty, you know, the red zone. It doesn't right. matter if you're no. between the twenty and the and the twelve. But when you're inside the ten zone, those are valuable. <laughs> yeah why'd you say the 20 and the 12 i was just throwing out an example oh, okay 20 and the 10 well because often you see a, a a stat about a running back he had this many carries in the red zone i don't care if you say red zone and he's getting a carry from the 18 it's it's just not it's not even close to as valuable as a carry inside the 10 so with the red zone report we, we're looking at 10 zone attempts we're looking at five zone attempts so inside the five yard line but christian mccaffrey had 32 10 zone attempts he ends up with 10 touchdowns. You, you've got Nick Chubb with 32 attempts. He ends up with four touchdowns. That's that's not great, Bob. Everybody near him in that opportunity uh, metric, look, Dalvin Cook, 31 attempts, 11 touchdowns. Zeke, 31 attempts, 11 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Gurley, 29 attempts, 11 touchdowns. Here's Nick Chubb with a complete inability to go from 10 zone opportunity to the end zone. But what do we believe about Nick Chubb? He's a great running back. Yes. He also had a horrible, problematic offensive line last mm-hmm. year, something we talk over and over again about what the team has addressed this offseason and, and you know Baker's opportunity to bounce back, but the efficiency wasn't there for Nick Chubb. Now, you might not make that an excuse for him if you thought the opportunities weren't coming this year, but his head coach is Kevin Stefanski. Dalvin Cook was second in these 10 zone attempts. We've seen him do this. Nick Chubb will be the goal line back. Right. Do you guys disagree with that contention at oh, all? Not, not at all. I, I don't disagree with it. What's funny is as you're bringing it up now, now I'm thinking about it. Like, what are the, what do the Browns look like if Nick Chubb was actually successful at the, the rate of the rest of the league? Like, how many more games do the, Cleveland Browns win. What is the, how how different is the narrative? Right. If he's not scoring, if he has six more touchdowns. Yeah, like the, the, a lot of things are different for that team. Yeah, and and so even within the five zone, uh, like I was saying, McCaffrey sixty percent of the time he got into the end zone. Cook sixty nine percent. Zeke eighty three percent of the time that he got the ball inside the five, he scored. And here's Nick Chubb at thirty seven percent. That almost seems like you have to be trying not to. Yeah. At thirty seven percent, the other takeaway. And I know you guys will be a huge fan of this. Yes, this yes, one. I am. But it's it's <laughs> it's the fact that Devontae Adams is oh, still a beast. Tell me something I don't know. And uh, despite being hurt, he was still, and we knew he was off the field. He was still third in the NFL in red zone targets, three behind Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas had twenty six. Despite those huge target numbers, which he was number three in the league, he only had four touchdowns. That is two red zone touchdowns. Uh, red zone touchdowns. That's correct. Which is uh, two fewer than any other w- outside wide receiver in that target range. So there were other guys that had a great deal of red zone targets. Uh, Tyler Lockett had twenty four of them. Julian Edelman had twenty three. Jarvis Landry had twenty two. All those guys scored more touchdowns than Devonte Adams. And Devonte Adams was arguably the most predictable touchdown scorer at the wide receiver position coming in. You know, it's not Julio. Right. It wasn't Michael Thomas coming in. It was Devontae Adams. So there's really no reason he shouldn't be in that upper echelon of consideration other than you look at last year, you say he didn't score as much and he got beat up. So to me, that just kind of speaks to Adams was the same guy. Rodgers has the same tendencies inside of the red zone. Bing, bang, boom. Yes. Adams could easily be the number one. It's I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I, I mean, Adams is is just such a valuable wide receiver because you know he's the number one for Aaron Rodgers, but it's the touchdowns. It, it's the touchdowns that have always made him so valuable, and this data just shows it's it's the it's still going to be there. He's the number one. He's the wide receiver one. He's also the wide receiver two. Funches is a three. That, that, <laughs> that's, that, the way that that's the way How I would. How dare you overlook Alan Lazard yet again. Okay, Funches is the four. Funches is the four. I apologize. You're 100 okay. percent right there. I well, accept your apology. I just I, any I, chance you know, to make kind of make fun of Devin Funches. Oh yeah, what I mean, about, you gotta take it. Don't you think Aaron Jones is the four? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
We're, we're, pl- we're playing the Devin S. Scrumptious uh, sound effect. While when we, else am I going to get to play While it? we drop him to number five, because he's clearly behind Aaron Jones, right? In, in terms of target? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, Funches is five. Okay. Is he behind uh, Sternberg? Mar- Mary Sternberg? <laughs> Sternberg. <laughs> yes. Let's get him down to seven. Can we get Aaron! him down to seven? All right. Am I up? Am I up with my I guess. You, you, you should give us a tip now. All right. So for, uh, for 2020, one of the things I... I look at every year, and you'll you'll hear us talk uh, pros and cons of strength of schedule, right? In general, overarching uh, thought of uh, a generic strength of schedule tool is not helpful. Um, Things are incorrect about assumptions. We we need a lot of data. Um, You know, a lot of turnover. A lot of people coming into the season, they look at uh, a strength of schedule tool, and they look at those playoff matchups because they want to win it all. And so they're they're looking at you know weeks 14, 15, 16, you know who who has the best matchup, and by that time we're going to know who has the best matchup, and it's not going to be who we predicted in preseason. But where it does matter is two places for me: it's early season schedule for the quarterbacks and early season schedule for team defenses. The reason why is because unless you've got Pat Mahomes. Or Lamar Jackson, or last year alone, the New England Patriots, you should be starting different players in those positions on a week to week basis more often than not, especially for defenses. You're always starting someone based on the matchup and, and mm-hmm. re- cycling through those. So when I'm at my draft, doesn't it make sense to look at, you know, you, you, you want to draft this great defense, right? Uh, Minnesota. Very good defense. Well, when I'm looking at the strength of schedule tool, we have it tabbed. We've got it default to the entire season. Okay, just so you can get a frame of reference for who appears to have a good schedule, bad schedule. We do have the playoffs on there. You could click it if you want to. It's, you, it's, it's there for, it's there for you to look. Them. You know, we've got a top 200, though I wouldn't use that either. But uh, <laughs> we, we're we here for the people. But click that early season schedule. And that will show those first four weeks. How are you going to get off to a good start or a bad start at the beginning of the season? And specifically with those players that there are other options based on matchups. So here's some nuggets for 2020. This is what I saw when I went, I click early season and I'm looking at quarterbacks and, you know, the streaming later round quarterback options. Here's two good options that were at the top of the list. Jared Goff and Josh Allen. We've talked about how bad Josh Allen's season schedule might be but at the beginning of the year Josh Allen the New York Jets the Miami Dolphins and the Raiders are three of his first four games that's fantastic and and with uh Jared Goff you've got basically there he's playing the the NFC East he's got uh the Eagles uh he gets off to start with the Cowboys whose defense is much worse and the Giants as three of his first four weeks so I'm in on you know those guys whereas you know, I've brought up Daniel Jones already yeah. and the fact that I like him as a breakout candidate in 2020, but there's no chance in the world I'm drafting him as my late round guy because you're not going to start him against Pittsburgh at Chicago and then the 49ers for his first three games. I don't have the confidence in that, but there's other guys. Sam Darnold, another uh, another late round guy you hope takes that step forward. Uh, he's got Buffalo and the Niners and the Colts Oof. in those first three weeks. He's off my draft board. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, I love uh, when I can put Ryan Fitzpatrick in my lineup. I do it because the, you, you know you can end up with those four touchdown, four hundred yard, crazy games. But he's starting at New England and then Buffalo to start the season. So he's off my draft. He's board. a full no go. He's a full no go. Um, and, and then for for defenses, you've got. I mean, this is unfortunate or fortunate, depending on your perspective. But the Patriots, the Ravens, and the 49ers, three of the best defenses, they get off to really nice uh, schedule. So if if you're in that you know second to last round and you get your your choice of those teams, you can pick the ones that are going to help you win early. Whereas Minnesota, really good defense, they they're going to play against Green Bay. And uh, the the, uh, the Colts and the Titans teams that don't turn the ball over, um, and and Green Bay plays Minnesota and the Saints and the Falcons, high powered offenses in those first couple of weeks. So that's how I like to use the strength of schedule. I personally use it every single year with those two positions going into my drafts. Well, and a lot of the times, you know, part of what 
we look at in ranking players for your draft is the tier type of mentality where there are players very, very comparable. So you need a reason to draft one over the other. They might be in the same tier. Things like that early season schedule may tip the scales for that decision. Same with risk and risk ratings. <clears throat> all right, Mike, you don't get to talk. Oh, oh that's all right. Get body. <laughs> Not yet, that is, because I want to thank today's sponsor, and I want to thank them from the heart. <laughs> because, look, Father's Day is coming up. You all got dads out there, yeah. and you, and, and you want to give them something that is very special. What if I just want to buy myself something <clears throat> special? You're a dad. I'm a You're dad. You're a dad. Yeah, that's totally fine because uh, <laughs> I think I've grilled out more over the last like five days than I ever have in my entire life. We're talking about Omaha Steaks. Omaha Steaks is a great gift to yourself or to your dad. The best steaks, huge variety of other favorites directly to your door. Uh, they have a variety of Father's Day packages that include world-famous steaks, burgers, franks, sausages, perfect for grilling, pork, poultry, side dishes, those uh, those caramel apple tartlets, Jason. Mm, mm. There's nothing I've had there that's not gen like genuinely awesome. They don't have hot dogs. They yeah, have they, they oh. have franks. Oh, yeah. I was like, no, how have you not had they're the unbelievable. franks? No, man. And they're unbelievable. So yes. right now, Omaha Steaks is offering our listeners access to a variety of their amazing packages that are perfect to send to Dad for Father's Day. Here's what you do: OmahaSteaks.com. Put in the code Footballers into the search bar. You'll see all the great options available. Many of those include free shipping and a free one-pound package of their perfectly cured, incredibly thick, applewood-smoked steak-cut bacon. Mm. There are many packages available, perfect for dad. They're all ready to be shipped straight to his door for Father's Day. Visit omahasteaks.com. Type footballers in the search bar to shop for Father's Day today. And we'd like to thank Manscaped for, for sponsoring today's show. They have the right tool to get the job done quickly, safely, and hygienically. Manscaped, without a doubt, is the best man's, men's brand for body trimmers. And I, I was just going to throw in, I, I got the nose hair, oh, yeah. ear hair trimmer the other day. From Manscaped? From Manscaped. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's really nice. Look, they know what they're doing. They're, they know how to get rid of body hair. And yeah. that's what my you want nose to do. has never been better manicured. <laughs> it, well, one of the goals of my life is to figure out how to, to just be rid of my body hair. <laughs> and oh. Manscaped's helped me do it with the perfect <clears throat> package 3.0 by Manscaped. It comes with the lawnmower 3.0, which is a waterproof cordless body trimmer. Uh, the trimmer ceramic blade prevents manscaping accidents. You can subscribe to the perfect package, get a new lawnmower trimmer replacement blade refill delivered every three months. And for a limited time, get a free travel bag i've used my manscaped uh lawnmower for years now i love the brand i recommend it to everybody and you can get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code footballers at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com use the code footballers you know what they call the the nose hair trimmer no <laughs> no what do they call that one the weed whacker oh yeah 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 that makes sense the problem with nose hairs that I have found, at least, I mean, a amongst many, <laughs> is every. It doesn't matter. The last time I trim my nose here, if I, if a thought pops up in my head of like, I probably need to trim my nose. You hairs, still they, have them. They instantly. Just, I don't. They just the, fly out. The I could have shaved yesterday. The older and they're you just get, there. the faster your nose hair grows. What? What I is mean, the deal with that? Judge, what's the deal? Okay, real quick. I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> just so you guys are aware, and and this, and this isn't just for YouTube, but anyone at home. Once once you have the weed whacker, you just say. I don't. I don't get nose hair. Mm. You just. You just straight lie. You don't. You. I don't have any <laughs> nose hair at all. Well, I, look. I, I was a little afraid to to stick it up there the first time because yeah. I mean it's a piece of machinery up in your nose. Sure. It was no big deal. Oh, it's, it's it was perfect. perfect. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you're you're up with your oh, no. ultimate draft tip. <laughs> all right. <laughs> No nose hair for your draft. That's the tip. <laughs> I am off kiltered over here. Thinking about my nose hairs, which now I have to trim because right, of because you thought about, about it. Yeah. Uh, the, the part of the UDK that I want to highlight, the video profiles. Jason mentioned it at the beginning of the show. He's so tired because we've been, we, we have been recording these things nonstop. There are over 100 players that we have a video profile because here's the thing. You're looking at our rankings. You're looking at numbers. These numbers can't craft an argument. You need some context. You. They can't give you our opinion on this player. And yes, you li you're listening to this podcast. 
you're hearing our opinion on players all the time. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for enjoying the show. But there might be a very specific player that you want to hear all three of us give a quick take about this player. And boom, it's right there in the video profile. All three of us, as we're going through the process, we all learn things about these players from from my two colleagues here. Like They'll give a, a, a stat maybe I haven't thought of, a, a narrative or something, a way to look at this player, that what they've done, what they could possibly do, and it, it will change how I think about a player. I, I, I think that the, the most learning experience through making the ultimate draft kit is the creation of those videos. I mean, that's what Mike's talking about. When, when we're in here diving deep and adding context and all three of us looking at every single player, um, I, I, I walk away from each one really having a much more firm understanding of the range of outcomes, what I personally believe, what, what the, you know, the, the most likely, least likely, um, uh, end results are going to be. And you, you look, you can grab the mobile app, which you get as part of the, the UDK subscription. You're going to be on the potty eventually. And you, what are you, what are you going to do? Learn some more, learn another TikTok dance. <laughs> You're going to look at, go put some likes on IG, or you're going to get ready for your draft. And when you, if especially look, if you're in a public restroom, turn that volume way up. Let, let everyone know. Yeah. Make the world a smarter place. <laughs> I totally agree, Mike. And, Thank s- you. and some of the players, I mean, to be honest, they might help get things moving. <laughs> right. Yeah, it needs to be flushed down. I mean, a not diuretic. everybody's a winner. There's some season. I mean, some players had seasons that were. You know, flush worthy. So yes. Man, uh, it was already my favorite part of the UDK, but now, yeah. but now that now that it's on the potty, there you go. Yeah. All right, all right. Here's my second ultimate draft tip. Um, we've had the consistency charts as as part of the draft kit for a couple of years, but we've taken steps to really improve the way they function. It's more of a snapshot tool at this point, and and what I'm talking about, if you don't know what they are, it is a one quick glance way to look at the season, look at all the different players from last year, and really get a gauge on on where they finished each and every week, and we color code it. So if you're in, you know, you had a top five week, you're a certain color, top 10, top 20, and you can look at players like Christian McCaffrey, and it's just col- yeah. covered in green because each and every week, you're not getting variance in that production. You're getting consistency. What you can do now with the with the consistency charts, with the snapshot tool is you can grab a small chunk of the season, first few games, middle of the season, after the bye, last five, whatever the case may be. Right. And it will not only show you just that part of the season and how these players performed, but it will rank them. You'll see how they ranked in that span. And you can actually, you know, through that filtering, you get a good idea of players that, for example, ended the season on a tear, right? They had a really strong back half of the year. And while your league mates, are spending all of their time looking at that end of season ranking, you know, 17 weeks, you can look at a smaller sample size and maybe find some insight, find some some things that, you know, there's a lot of rookies. They might take a little while to get going, but you can get a picture. Try and take out a stretch of a player. You know they were hurt. You know that when they came back, they were still dealing with an injury, and it's clear when they were actually healthy again, and so you're not going to hold those – those injury games against them. Find out how they are. Like Barkley. Bar- Barkley, yep. it's it's a weird year for Barkley. But then if you look at once he was finally healthy, you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's Saquon. He's Saquon Barkley. There's no need to be concerned. So I, I, I sorted it by week eight on, and I wanted to pull some insights out for you. From week eight on, back half of the year, Daniel Jones. Mm-hmm. He was the quarterback six in points per game in that span. He, he can put up big ones. That's a pretty profound number. Points per game, QB6. Melvin Gordon, somebody that we've debated on this show a lot. You know, you kind of look at last year with this, you know, he didn't start the year, the contract, it's just got stink all over it. He was the running back 10 in points per game from week eight on. And then this one, mm. which, you know, mm. if there's one player that mm. we we disagree a lot on yeah. this show. We don't disagree about the potential of Calvin Ridley. We talk about him like, you know, this this coming year could really be the breakout season, the, the Chris be. Godwin season. Will be. Yeah. Will I mean, be. he's in our breakouts in the UDK. Spoiler alert. You just got that for free. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Calvin Ridley, 
was the wide receiver eight in points per game. So that was a breakout from right. weeks eight from week eight on last year. It just wasn't, you know, when you look at the total season and where he finished, it wasn't wide receiver eight. So that those are some insights on the good side. On the other side, a couple of negatives, if you look from week eight on, Nick Chubb, who finished the year as the running back 14, he was the running back 25 yeah, in got, that span. He got Kareemed. Yeah. And then Allen Robinson. Mm, this was a surprise. Don't say this one. But just sorting it, filtering it by that back half of the year, he finished as the wide receiver 10. But he was the wide receiver 23 over the back half of the year. Mm. Mm. So how does that make you feel, Mike? It it sounds like he was just so awesome <laughs> at the beginning of the year, and he could probably do that for a whole season. Ah, uh, okay. That's one way you can interpret the data is Mike's very rose colored Allen Robinson way. But but you know, I didn't approach this with any biases. I approached it looking for outliers and players that as I'm scrolling down, I'm going, oh, Allen Robinson, what you doing way down there at wide receiver 23 despite finishing the year where you did? So it's kind of neat to be able to pull out those little insights and take right. advantage of them in your draft. Yeah, and, and I would just add to that, not just the stretches, but just seeing a player can finish somewhere and not help your team. He can hurt your team often. I love just looking at that tool and saying, I'm between these two guys in my draft. Let me pull that up and be like, oh, this one is just, he's not going to hurt me two out of every three games to get the end of season ranking. And and a shout out to our man Brooks, who is the originator. I always got to give you a shout out, Brooks, because you are the originator of that tool. You created it for yourself, for your drafts. And I was like, this thing's awesome. I'm stealing it. I had completely forgotten that. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, but no, thank you for, for the originality in creating it because it's a tool I, I have used to make myself better at fantasy every year. So for that, you're not fired yet. Uh, my next, uh, my next ultimate draft tip here, something I absolutely love, and, and I'm going to give a couple pieces of insight. I've learned a lot in our injury report. You forget guys that were injured. Now we know the, the, you know, the, the big names, right? AJ Green miss a season. What's his injury status? How's he coming back? How's he looking right now? But there's like Mark Ingram or, or Evans and Godwin or Jarvis Landry. Like you forget that these guys ended the season injured. Um, and, and I, you know, it's, it's nice to read through that report and re remind myself like, okay, this guy's coming off of this, or this guy was dealing with this. Now he's not. Um, but here's the three biggest takeaways that, that I see. And, and Matthew Betts, he's one of the best around at coming up with, um, you know, the quality results from, from, you know, a medical perspective when it comes to injuries and fantasy football, he's a board certified orthopedic physical therapist. He knows his stuff. He's the he's, best. He's, oh, oh, oh yeah, that's good. He's oh, the best. My, it's not he's, good. Oh, um, that was, look, Matthew, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, he's doing a cartwheel right now. Anyways, he's, he's the, the best. He's the best around. around. Yes. No one's ever going to bring him down, but, um, <laughs> Here are the three when I read that um, stuck out for you, stuck out for me, illuminated, you know, challenged my preconceived notions. First was Big Ben. Big Ben was injured in week two and he had kind of that 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 baseball injury, right? Mm -hmm. That elbow that's very rare for football in baseball. Pitchers average recovery time to get back on the field is about 17 months. OK, and he was injured in week two. So. You've seen him throwing the ball right now. You've seen him out there, um, you know, with Juju looking. And when you when you read the whole write up on Big Ben, you can see the concerns. You can see where he should be. Um, and and it's it's illuminate because he's one of those cases where you have to say, "Am I going in on Big right. Ben or or am I not?" An another player is Darius Geis, who's been injured. Uh, once, twice, three his, times the lady. His body does not like football. His body does not like football. He had his ACL injury, and if if you remember the uh the crazy recovery that he had, right? An ACL people come back from it all the time, but he had to suffer with all of the disease and the you know the the issue of mm. um not recovering through the ACL. So he comes back on a way longer timeline, and then re-injures. A knee, but it's an MCL injury. When I was reading through Betts's, uh, you know, write up, he thinks that that MCL is a blessing in disguise because the MCL is going to basically be healed. Um, 
that's not uh, something he needed surgery for. He just needed a little time off. But by that injury, it allowed him to rest the ACL recovery, which you know he was pushing that timeline. So what ends up happening is for the first time in his career, he's basically coming in at his healthiest. He's worried about his long-term prognosis, but he believes that Darius Geis is coming in at 100% healthy right now. And he's got the opportunity to win this job. So I know we've d- discussed Darius Geis as like, is this uh, is this a guy who is going to have an opportunity? You two both are pretty much out. It's a crowded backfield. There's uh, a ton of guys. There. I'm out from the perspective of will he will he actually be given the opportunity? I mean, he probably still is the best runner on that team. But it's a new coaching staff. It's it's new people. So that's where I'm more concerned. But it's it's good to know that at least the the body of Darius guys should be good to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and now the biggest one to me, Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, I'm gonna actually read some of the write up here, so you get an example of 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 what you're of what you're seeing. Alshon Jeffrey suffered a sprain in his right foot in Week 14, which required season-ending Liz Frank surgery, which he believes will significantly affect Jeffrey in 2020. One specific study that looked at NFL players coming off Liz Frank surgery found that just over 80% of players did return to the field, but it took an average of 10 months. Jeffrey's surgery occurred in December, indicating it's extremely unlikely he is ready for week one. That same study also found that offensive players performed far worse than defensive players after surgery, and in general, and all players in the study showed a 21% reduction in performance from their first season back from injury. So you've got an old oft injured Alshon coming back on a short timeline. And this is one that, that you know, I, I was not aware that the timeline was that rushed here. Um, and does, so, that, does that change your perspective, not just on Alshon, but on Jalen Rager or yes. opportunities on the outside for somebody else? Yeah. For, for, I mean, you know, we talk about how Ertz is always the king of the opportunity when wide receivers go down. Mm-hmm. Maybe Ertz is a little bit safer than we thought, or Rager has more opportunity coming in at the start of the season. Um, and maybe it's the beginning of the end for Alshon. But, you know, those type of insights are so valuable because I'm not a doctor. I mean, I know you all think, you know, I've probably I've, got I've an honorary doctorate. I've made a mistake doctorate. to believe that you were at times. Yeah, but uh, Matthew Betts, You, you do believe you could be a doctor. I know for a fact I could be a doctor. I, it would just take a lot of schooling and go. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I mean, I could definitely be a wasn't, doctor. Wasn't there a question you answered once about could you perform... Yes, open but, heart surgery, and somehow you had an actual percentage that was not below one. No, no. It, Am I remembering it, it, that incorrectly? It, I believe that was the question between whether you could perform an open heart surgery or land a plane. <laughs> oh, of course. And there's no chance. Like, I, if I perform an open heart surgery, you're just dead. It's a hundred percent kill rate. I mean, I can't, I can't do <laughs> anything right, okay. for you, but I can land that plane for sure. <laughs> The the heart surgery one would be kind of one of those oh. situations where what do I do with my hands? You you, right. wouldn't, you wouldn't know what to do next. I'd so open them up and I go, all done. <laughs> let's let's close them. <laughs> let's <laughs> close them up because there's nothing good. You would be the master of the me. placebo effect surgery. Exactly because they do that sometimes, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would just get stuck in the wash area. Like every time they, you know, I I wash my hands and they're gonna put my gloves on. I would like rub my face real fast. Oh, like, I gotta oh, wash again. Oh, sorry guys. I, I I'll get it this time. Sir, He's it's been, been eight hours. Washing his hands for eight hours. <laughs> Can we get another doctor in here? And that's when you're. Oh, I've timed out. I, yeah. I, sorry guys. Lunch. I gotta, I gotta get shift out change. Of here. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mike, do you have one more? For yeah, us? yeah. I got As one more feature that it, it's. It, we talk about improving the ultimate draft kit all the time. Well, we have we figured out a way. I think we started this maybe halfway through last year, so it's still very new, and people may not have noticed this, but we give you a free preview to the Foot Clan, a.k.a. the the Footcast that we put out every single week for our supporters on jointhefoot.com. You get in there, and you get access. You can listen to that podcast. You want? Do you want more fantasy footballers? Well, inside the UDK, there it is. You can you can test it out. You can see how much you enjoy this extra episode. I was going to say you can see if maybe you think it's worth it, but that's just a dumb thing to say because, of course, <laughs> it's worth it. It's just how what level are you going to actually enjoy this podcast? But you can't get enough football. You can't get enough fantasy football analysis. So 
Might as well, well get an extra episode. So right there inside your UDK, you get a free preview of an extra episode. Yeah, and I would also throw out there, I mean, we, we've we got target share reports that have been very valuable to us during the construction of all those videos, the player profile videos. Yep. Seeing what teams are throwing the ball, you know, at the highest percentage to the tight end position or to the wide receiver, uh, help inform predictions for the upcoming year, um, all the tiers and all the other, you know, reception perception, uh, lots of great breakdowns in there. I like to, it, here's a hot tip for reception perception. I like to find players I hate and then find a reception perception <laughs> chart that backs mm, up that backs nice. up my viewpoint. Yes, confirmation bias confirmation is one bias. of the best yeah. things you can do yeah. as a fantasy football owner. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you really want to make sure you confirm whatever you already believe. Well, as long as Matt Harmon confirms it for me. Right, I'm you're, not, you're just being confirmed. That's Thank right. you. Thank Otherwise, you. you know, close your eyes. <laughs> All right. You guys want to do a little mailbag? Sure. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. Braden in California, the footballers. Oh, this is he's he's doing one of those things where he kind of pats us on the head to mm, start it. I uh, see what you're doing. The Braden. footballers are obviously top tier football analysts, obviously and experts. But would they successfully be able to coach a high school football team? If so, who is the head coach, the OC, and the DC? This is pretty incredible timing for Braden. Because I, I'm not even joking. I asked myself this question yesterday. Wow. <laughs> you want to know why I did? <laughs> no. Because I watched Remember the Titans with my eight-year-old. And I watched, which is a great movie. It's very entertaining. But no, I don't think I could successfully coach a high school football team. I think I... Unless I, I could I, delegate all of the real play calling and but just be the that's inspirational where you, master. That's yeah. where you can't. Like, I could take the kids to Gettysburg and give them a Gettysburg speech about team that's, teamwork. That's where you pull up Madden. <laughs> you write down some notes. You just get a couple formations. There, There's your, your defensive formation. There are so many intricacies. So the answer is no. Well, no. Look, and I would be that coach. I would find my best player, and he'd be the wide receiver, and it would be... Throw it to that guy. Oh, you 100%. you go to the well over and over and over yes. and over and over again. Yes. Yeah, like Sean Payton does. Like Andy Reid does. If you've got a play that works, just keep doing it until they stop you. Yes. There's there's really no reason not to. Like there's no moral rules about doing the same play over and over. You should never ever feel bad if the same play and works. And I always do when I play Madden. I'm like, I want a well balanced offense. Yeah. And Mike's like, I'm gonna throw it to Tyreek Hill every play, and you're gonna lose. So, uh, but if you're going to break up the the offense and defense, I'll give Mike the defense because right. we, you know, he played linebacker on our flag team. So I have a, at least a little bit of experience. And then, uh, you know, well, if that's the case, then I'm going to make you the offensive coordinator, Andy. Um, not just to make myself the head coach, um, <laughs> but, but because you, you're, you know, you are a quarterback for our championship flag football team mm, yes uh, never forget that no and I, I won't um and i'm then, talking to the people <laughs> <laughs> right and they won't um but you you know you know offenses very well as a head coach i'm going to really rely on you two to do <laughs> all of it and i will be the motivational speaker yeah no that's not bad that's not bad you're they're the most john gruden of the three of us so thank you yeah how do you, you. like that <laughs> i'll take, I'd take hey, that it's better than gays all right Joel has a question for us. He's a Seahawks fan in the heart of Niners territory. Oh, stay strong, Joel. Uh, smooth routes in the fourth round. Mm. So you've got Kenny Galladay in the fourth. Or Mark Andrews in the 13th round. What would you do there? Mm. Mark Andrews for essentially free in a half-point redraft league or Kenny G in the fourth, which is a great value. I'm, I'm definitely in here on Mark Andrews. I, I see him... As the third tight end, um, and if I can get him for free and forget that position, I think if I look at what wide receiver I could replace in the fourth round, and the difference between that and Kenny Galladay versus what tight end I can get, am I gonna? If I want to get a Mark Andrews like tight end, I'm probably gonna have to pay up for George Kittle, you know, or 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 Kelsey, and spend a second on those players, or you know, something like that. So I, I'm very much in on Mark. But Andrews wouldn't here. you? think it's better then that you can get a wide receiver one in the fourth 
And then overspend for the and t- then dra- and then get Travis Kelsey in the second, even if you feel like you're overpaying. No, for because him. you're you're discounting the fact that I get another player in the second. Yeah. So I I'm getting a great it's running Andrews back plus and those Mark two Andrews. players. Yeah. So no. I do wonder though if this is yet another instance where Kenny G is not getting the respect he deserves, because if you replace Kenny Galladay in the fourth with uh, some of the other upper echelon, uh, you know, Julio Jones in the fourth round, or oh, okay. Devonte Adams or Chris Godwin. Does your answer change? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think. It, I, I mean, if you're talking about Julio, where you know, I've I've pretty much got a lock for the most receiving yards in the league, close to the most targets and receptions. And I have Kenny Galladay one spot behind Julio Jones. That's what I mean. Is it, maybe in our heads we're not making that connection? Yeah, yet. I'm taking I'm taking Kenny Galladay. Hmm. I, I think part of this is what you believe in Mar- about Mark Andrews as well. Do you see him as someone that is I do truly I do see that. If that's Kelsey in the 13th, that's my pick. But in this situation, I'll go Kenny G. Okay. I will definitely take Andrews. I you and, st- you I and stand me by Andrews that. stand alone. I, I stand with my man. That's fine. I mean, that's why the question's there. Mark Andrews is great. Part of the target share report, 42% of all targets in Baltimore went to the tight end. And Hayden Hurst is gone. And well, that Mark did, Andrews is dealing with injury. Nick Boyle's going to be a yeah. baller. Yeah, someone else will. Number one ahead. overall tight end, Nick Boyle. <laughs> All right, uh, here's a dynasty trade question from Alex in the United Kingdom. Bonjour. Oh, bonjour. The United Kingdom that does not include Ireland. It's not Ireland. Ireland. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Northern Ireland, but definitely not all of Ireland. Everybody knows that. <laughs> That's going to come up every time we say the UK now. <laughs> uh, as it should. Right. Much, much respect. Yes, yes. Respect Let, the world to must know. I'm still getting DMs about it. <laughs> I'm still getting messages about it. People are passionate about it. And you know what? They're, they're never like, they're never very nice. They're never like, you know... Just so you know, it's always like, learn to read a book <laughs> or something. It's like, you guys need to yes. go back to school. I mean, this is one of one of the most important things to us. We could go back to school and we still wouldn't know this <laughs> yeah, because they don't teach that here. Yeah. And we were still kind of right. Yes, thank you. I mean, not that I want to, like, I'm mostly wrong. <laughs> but Northern Ireland is in the UK. That's so, according to... My sources. That's Does true. this mean that like Irish people Alex might be living in Northern Ireland right now? Do Irish people then hate the Northern Islanders? That's uh, what I, yeah, that's, I mean. That's the part we probably don't want to talk yeah, about. Never mind. Never mind. Never <laughs> mind. Never mind. <laughs> Moving on. Fantasy football. Where's What's Connor, your question? But what I learned from that is our international audience is actually pretty strong. Yeah. Thank you. Bonjour. Bonjour. And incredible. And super Very passionate amazing. about the UK. All right. Alex in the UK says, Is Mike uh, is a Michael Thomas for a Kyler Murray? trade uh, a sensible thing to do this is a two quarterback oh. dynasty not one quarterback okay um, i think murray can be huge but is it worth giving up michael thomas michael thomas in a league like that no no i wouldn't no if, they, if is there a quarterback's name that i could have said that would have changed your opinion if i had said patrick mahomes or lamar jackson pat mm-hmm. mahomes is the only one that i think is uh, you know or, and lamar jackson I, those two guys are in consideration but if i was in a super flex league and I've, you know, got the one oh one and let's just for this argument say say uh Chris McCaffrey's off the board and I would draft Michael Thomas ahead of either of those quarterbacks. All right. Michael in Dublin, don't worry, Dublin, Ohio. Oh okay. thank goodness. <laughs> don't say that, Jason. <laughs> don't I'm just saying I don't say, have to get trapped with don't geography. Say that. Um Michael in Dublin, Ohio, when do you guys bump the show up to more than twice a week? Great question. It's right around the corner. We are going July. in July. We go to three. Uh, and then in August, we are every single day, five times uh, a, a week. week. <laughs> and that runs all the way through December. Or if you have the draft kit, like I, say, I said, it's instantaneous it's right now yeah. a week. Um, all right. Last one. Joshua in White Lake, Michigan. Do you know where that is, Brooks? I don't offhand actually. Okay. Nope. All right. He's Brooks is from Michigan. I figured he knew his Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> James Connor or Christian Kirk in a PPR dynasty league. Oh, so this says man. a lot about you know, Christian Kirk, what do you believe about his dynasty prospects? You know, I'm not super jazzed about them, but I am not super excited about James Connor long term in a dynasty either. So right. I think it's Kirk. This is not close. This is not close at all to me. It's Christian Kirk yeah. by ten miles. Christian Kirk over the next six seven years is going to have a, a fine enough career. He's going to have fantasy relevance. He's not a superstar player, 
But James Conner over the next five years probably has this year of being relevant. You agree with that, Mike? Because I uh, tend yeah. to think that the shelf life is very short for Conner. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm taking Christian Kirk here. I just was trying to formulate in my head, like, is there a way where it's possibly James Conner? Because if James Conner has a really good year, I think that the Steelers would re-up him because he wouldn't demand a lot. Or he could try and get a huge contract, but I think that James Conner would understand the, his, mar- his the market, market out is, there is going to yeah. be low. He's in, he's a huge injury risk. Why not just re up in feel like Pittsburgh? That, that that, logic, I'm just saying no, it's no, no. Possible. I, I'm not trying to just right. say that's not going to happen. It's just once you make the lower financial commitment to a player, you are staying under the lower obligation of using that player. So Connor, they might like him if he has a big season. He's going to want more money, and if he has a smaller season and takes less money, he's they have less obligation to him. More, you know, McFarland could be more of a of that situation. Could it just be. seems. Yeah, seems I'm like there's Christian a tough Kirk. pathway. I'll take Christian. That's Kirk. all, especially yeah, I mean, in PPR. Yeah, I've always seen Christian Kirk as a comp to, to like Sterling Shepard, not a guy that you know is going to win you a league, but he's he's solid, and I'll take that type of a career over an injury prone running back with a very short shelf life ahead of him. All right, well that does it for today's episode of the podcast. One final reminder. After the ultimate draft tips on today's show, head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Get in on the pre order. It releases on Monday. <laughs> we're, we're so excited about this. I mean, it really has been an, a nine to five thing, UDK centric for a very long time here since the NFL draft. And we're excited to bring it to you. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep updating it constantly. It's always going to, you know, opinions, depth charts, all those things change. And you're going to be able to log in and see those changes reflected in the system and stay one step ahead of your league mate. So that is it for today's episode of the show. Appreciate you. We'll be back next week. Oh, man. Let's, Jason, we need to get some sleep. <laughs> I see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And one more reminder, Omaha Steaks will deliver the world's best steaks and a huge variety of your favorites directly to your dad's door in time for Father's Day. Make Father's Day simple this year. Send dad the gift he really wants, perfectly aged Omaha Steaks, and get free shipping and free steak cut bacon with select packages. Visit omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar, and see a variety of their amazing packages.